Yo, what is up everyone? It's Josh again. I hope you are doing well and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'll be showing you how to solder some common USB connectors used for custom keyboard cables and also how to apply the metal housings to them. I'll be using these USB-C, micro, mini, and A connectors you see right here. These are the same ones I have available in the store for less than a dollar each. So if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description below. As I'll just be covering soldering and housings in this video here, make sure to check out my DIY cable tutorials playlist if you haven't already. So if you want to learn about sleeving, coiling, detachables, and all the good stuff there, make sure to check that out. I also put a page including a bunch of DIY resources. So if you want to see soldering diagrams as well as a bunch of different resources to get you started making cables, the link will also be in the description below. If you find this video helpful in any way, leaving a like is always appreciated. And also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that being said, let's hop right into this video. The soldering I'm going to be doing here is going to be a little quick and dirty, but this should give you a good idea how to get started soldering your own USB cables. I would highly recommend either using a flux pen or paste for cleaner joints, and I might do a video of that in the near future. We'll be starting with the USB-C connector here. As you see, I have my wire pre-stripped and fanned out in the order that I'll be soldering it in. I add a little solder to tin the tip of my iron, and I'm going to go ahead and add additional solder to the contact points of my USB-C connector. All of the soldering I'm going to be doing in this video is going to be played in real time, so I hope this gives you a good idea of the soldering process. As you can see here, I have my soldering iron on the contact point, and I'm going to feed the solder into it to get it onto the connector. There's a lot of things I need to do to improve my own soldering skills, but this is one thing I've learned to really be able to apply the solder to these contact points. I'm going to go ahead and add a little solder to the exposed wires of my cable before soldering it to my connector. As I start soldering, I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and I'm going to grab each of the individual wires and prepare them to be attached to my USB-C connector. I try to have my wires as straight as possible as I solder them onto my connector. As you will see here, the exposed wire is very small. You do want to minimize the amount of exposed wire you have on your, on your cable connection. Having any more exposed wire than you need may lead to some shorts in the future. As I finish up this connection here, as a quick tip, I usually heat the solder itself on the contact point and then kind of pull the wire into it to create my solder joint. Applying the USB-C housing to the connector is fairly simple. There's a little notch inside of the housing where the connector will fit tightly in. I grab one side of it, make sure that it's fit in the notch, and then I'll grab the other and place it over and it should snap in place. I typically use a piece of thin heat shrink over the contact points to cover our connections, as being a metal housing, it's another fail safe to prevent shorts. I'm going to grab a pair of pliers and I'm just going to use this to secure our connector onto the cable. I start off by putting pressure on the pieces of the housing. And then I'm going to get the individual prongs and tightly secure them around the cable. I usually take my time in this process. I recommend you take the time to do so and make sure it's applied as neatly as possible. Once you have it finished, you should have a tight fit connection and I would recommend pulling on it a little to make sure that it is well secured. Moving on to our USB micro connector, the pins that are allocated to this one is the reverse of the one that we did for USB-C. As what I did with the USB-C connector and soldering it, I'm pretty much going to apply the similar approach to all of the rest of the connectors in this video. The USB micro connector I think has a little smaller of a contact point, so for myself I had to be a little more careful in how I apply solder to it as it's easy to make some mistakes here. One little trick that I figured out is that it's really important to make sure that your solder hand is as stable as possible. I remember from when I used to do photography we used to use like monopods or we used to like lean onto a wall to make sure that our camera shots as clean as possible. So here I'm using the vent for my solder fumes 
as kind of a surface for my soldering hand to keep it as stable as possible and in this way I'm able to make precise solder movements. So again, similar to the USB-C connector, I went ahead and tinned my contact points on the micro connector here and I'm going to go ahead and tin the exposed wires on my cable. After doing this, I can solder the connection together. I'm always constantly adjusting the connector as well as the wire as I solder any connection. Really take your time and you'll find out what works for you as you solder. As I carefully solder the rest of these pins, I'm just going to take my time, make adjustments, and hopefully get some clean connections as I finish up this USB micro soldering. Applying the housing to the USB micro connector is fairly easy. One side of the housing is curved and it should fit right in place with one side of the USB micro connector. After applying that, I'm just going to snap in place the other side of the housing. Similar to the USB-C connector, I usually add a thin piece of heat shrink around the contact points as a little extra protection. As you see here, I'm just going to go ahead and secure the housing onto the wire as I'm going to take my time with my pliers to apply pressure onto the cable and the housing, as well as wrap the prongs over it to make sure that it is as secure as possible. Moving on to the USB mini connector, I find this one to be the most tricky for myself. I typically have the wire that's gonna be applied to the D minus pin a little longer than the rest of the exposed wires. One trick that I use for the USB mini connector is initially I'll actually gently bend the top pin up to allow me to easily solder the lower three pins. You probably know this already, but similar to the other connectors, I'm going to go ahead and apply some tin to these pins and then also tin my exposed wires as I make this connection. Similar to the other connectors, I take my time adjusting the connector and the wire as necessary to ensure that I have a really nice connection for each of these contact points. I think specifically with the USB mini connector, I spend a lot of time with it and I really make sure that it is in the right position to make sure that I can do the best work as possible. So in general, take your time, USB mini is probably not the easiest connector to work with, but you know, if you're able to really have patience and really able to Make sure you make the right adjustments. You should have some clean soldering that you can have here. Once you have the bottom three pins soldered securely, you can go ahead and bend the top pin down and repeat the same process for that last pin.
Adding the housing to the USB mini connector is usually a breeze. I just grab the connector and gently insert it into the larger part of the housing. It should fit snug into place. At this point I usually add a little hot glue or some adhesive as I have noticed some USB mini connectors getting loose. Once this is all set in place, I'm going to grab the smaller part of the USB mini housing and it should snap in place over it. Once this is secured, I'm going to go ahead and grab my pliers again and I'm going to make sure that I secure the connector onto the cable. Moving on to the USB-A connector, I find this to be the easiest one to work on. Having such a large space to solder this on, I feel like it's pretty forgiving as you make your connections here. For this connector, I usually have a lot more exposed wire than I do for the other connectors, just to make sure that I am able to make a very nice solder connection to this connector. I start by adding a little solder to all the individual exposed wires, and once those are all tinned up, I'll go ahead and add a generous amount of solder to the contact points of the USB-A connector. As with the other connectors, I'm going to grab my pair of tweezers and I'm going to carefully place the individual wires and make sure to solder them all together. As you can see here, I think my D plus connection can use a little improvement. So I'm going to make a little adjustment to make this connection a little cleaner. Applying the housing to the USB-A connector is similar to what we did with the USB mini. We're going to grab the connector itself and slide it into the larger part of the housing. I typically use my thumb to make sure that it is securely into place. Once the connector is in, I grab the smaller part of the housing and then slide it right in so it should fit securely in and should snap into place. With the USB-A connector, similar to the USB mini and USB-C, I usually add a thin strip of heat shrink around it to kind of protect it from the shell itself. And to finish things off, I'm going to finish securing this connector using my pair of pliers and making sure that it's done as cleanly as possible. So I went ahead and added heat shrink to the ends of the connectors and here we have our finished cables. I think they turned out great and they ended up working with the various keyboards I tested them with. You know I actually had to do quite a bit of soldering when I was in university, and in my personal opinion I think soldering these USB cables is actually a fairly easy way to learn the skill. I think soldering is something useful for everyone to know, and I hope this video helped to show you that it really isn't as scary as it sounds. 
Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, make sure to leave a thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> That's all from me today. I hope to see you in the next video and make wise choices. Okay, bye.